Today I'm sharing with you how I made this perfect baby hat. It is incredibly wide brimmed, so very sun safe. And also with the addition of this chin strap and toggle, even the fussiest of hat babies isn't able to pull it off. But before we get into that, let's see some bloopers. Broke the needle. Tia, oops, your head's cut off. Should probably use a fabric marker instead of just a pen that I love. Ah. <laughs> what you see versus reality. You enjoyed watching a very I'm on my channel. Oopsie. Hi crafty people. Today I have Ruben here with me who is the youngest of my four kids and he has just turned one and he is showing us the hat that I've made him recently. I've made all four of my kids hats like this that are really wide brimmed and that have a chin strap like this with the hat toggle Ta -da! so that they can keep it on their heads. I have previously shared a video about how to make hats, yeah. but this updated video that I'm sharing with you today will include how to make the chin strap uh, and a few other little tweaks to the process that I'm sharing with you today <laughs> to make it even easier to sew a hat like this. <laughs> Are you so cheeky? <laughs> If this is the first video of mine that you're watching, then welcome. My name is Marie, and this channel is all about the projects that I like to sew and create for my kids and my life as a mum. If you enjoy this video as you're watching it and you'd like to see more of them, don't forget to subscribe down below so that YouTube knows to send you more of my content. But with all of that being said, let's get making. My mum makes summer hats. Download and print this pattern from the description box and you're going to use these test squares here to make sure that it is printed at the correct size so you'll want to be printing at 100% when you print it. Cut and glue the pages together to make the pattern pieces complete. Then we're going to pick which size we're going to cut to make our hat. Before cutting out my pattern pieces, I always extend the brim piece by 1.5 centimeters. So I'm using my ruler to go along the edge of the brim, but then I'm adding on one and a half centimeters all the way around at different points. And I'll be connecting these points to widen the outside of this brim. This hat for Ruben, I'm cutting a six to 12 month size because even though he has just turned one, I find this hat does run a little bit big for my kids. So I size down when I make it. With our pattern pieces cut out of paper, we're now going to start with our brim piece and cut that first out of our interfacing. I am using iron-on interfacing and I'm going to first put it onto the non-shiny side and trace out four of my brim pieces. Cut them out and then we're going to iron them down onto our main fabric. The shiny side of your iron-on interfacing needs to go down on the back side of your main fabric and when you iron over the top of it, it will heat up the glue to adhere it to your fabric. My fabric is a directional print and if yours is too, you'll wanna to make sure all of your pieces are facing the right way so that the pattern isn't upside down once you make your hat. With our brim pieces cut, we're now going to cut the hat tops and hat sides. We need two sides and one top out of our main fabric and two sides and one top out of the lining fabric. I've made hats before without a chin strap and in that case you can make them reversible with the inside lining being a different pattern to the outside. But I find with the chin strap it's better to have something plain and simple as the lining so that they know that is the inside of their hat. This makes a difference with the chin strap because you can't reverse it or the chin strap will be on the wrong side. So I find having a plain lining helps them to put their hat on correctly and not have the chin strap on top of their head. With all our pieces cut, we have a hat top and two sides and two brims for the inside and a hat top, two sides and two brims for the outside. We're going to start sewing by putting our two brim pieces right sides together and our two hat side pieces right sides together and sewing down each of those sides. I'm going to use my wonder clips when I'm putting together my brim pieces because the interfacing makes it too thick to use pins. On the hat side pieces though, I can just use pins to join them together before I sew them in my sewing machine. Use a straight stitch to sew each of these pieces together and using a one centimeter or three eighths of an inch seam allowance. I sew each of these pieces directly after each other without taking the previous one out and then I cut them apart at the end. This saves on thread and it saves time instead of taking each piece out individually and separating it before sewing the next one. Head over to your iron and press each of these seams open on the hat top and on the brim pieces. No, oh, it's gonna be so cute. <laughs> I love this fabric. Forgot to draw all the notches on. 
Ideally, you would have transferred all the notch markings when you are cutting out your pattern pieces, but if you forgot like me, you can just add them on at this point. The notches are there to help you be able to line up the pattern pieces better when we pin them together in the next step. Pin your hat top and your hat sides together by matching the side seams and all the notches that we have just transferred and adding a lot of pins. You need more than you think you do because it is hard to sew around a curve like this when we're attaching a straight piece to a curved piece. It helps to have your pins on the hat side part so that when you go to sew it, the circle part, which is the hat top, is facing down. The hat side is where any of the bunching is going to happen, so that's why I like it to be on the top so it's visible. That way, as I'm sewing around it, again with a 3 8 of an inch or one centimeter seam allowance, I'm able to manipulate my fabric and move it around, stretch it a bit to make sure that it doesn't bunch here and I have a nice smooth straight seam. I'm going to do the same thing with my lining piece and then we're going to move on to making the chin strap. I'm using pre-made 25mm or 1 inch bias tape and I also have these hat toggles and I'm going to leave a link to the hat toggles that I bought if you'd like to buy some too. I wasn't sure which colour hat toggle would best suit this fabric, so I put it to a poll on Instagram. If you would like to be part of future polls like this, I'd love for you to follow me on Instagram so that you can take part in real time on the projects that I'm making just like this. While I waited for the results of the poll, I cut out a 65 centimetre piece of my bias tape and folded it in half and ironed it flat. And then I sewed down the open edge so that it was one continuous strap. If you were making this for an older kid, I would recommend a 75 centimeter long piece of bias tape. That's what I did for my older kids. I waited until the next day to check the poll results and the winner was blue. You're going to thread your bias tape up through one hole and then back down through the other hole so that you can secure the toggle onto your chin strap before sewing it onto your hat. We're going to attach our chin straps to the lining piece of our hat. Line one side of your chin strap up with the seam on the hat side using the right side of the fabric and then do the same on the other side lining up the chin strap with your other seam. Then we're going to sew it in place with a straight stitch. It'll look like this once the chin strap is attached. Next we're attaching our brim piece to our hat top. So I'm inserting my hat top into the brim piece here and matching up the side seams so that the right sides are together. I'm using a wonder clip to attach here at the side seams and at the notches on the side points. The chin strap is also pushed inside the hat between these two layers. Then I'm adding in extra clips around that brim piece so that it is all lined up evenly ready for me to sew a straight stitch on this on my sewing machine. I'm doing the exact same thing on the top piece as I am doing here to the lining piece. And as always, you're using a 3 8 of an inch or one centimetre seam allowance. I hear someone waking up. Oh well. Let me know in a comment below if you, like me, also have to steal those few minutes when your kids are asleep here and there throughout the day so that you can get to sewing. But the next day I got around to finishing this hat off. So I sewed around this section here to attach the brim to the hat top and I did that on both the lining piece and on the main fabric piece as well. Take it slowly and carefully as you're sewing around the seam because it is hard to manipulate the fabric to make sure it doesn't bunch when you're sewing this curved seam. At this point it's very exciting because it is starting to look like a hat but before we finish it off we're going to use our pinking shears to cut around those curved seams on both the hat top and on the brim piece there just to make sure it's not bunched. If you don't have pinking shears you can just cut notches with your normal fabric scissors. Push your chin strap securely into the lining of your hat so you don't accidentally sew over it as we sew the brims together. Then we're going to clip all the way around the brim, first starting at the seam allowances and matching them together, and then putting clips at various other points around the brim so that we can have it nice and straight, ready to sew. If you don't have wonder clips, you could use hair clips or paper clips or anything else similar to that. Then we're going to sew it on our sewing machine and leaving a gap so that we can turn the hat out the right way once we've sewn it. I'm using my pinking shears again to clip down my seam allowance or you could just use regular fabric scissors and then we're ready to turn our hat back out the right way using the hole we left in the brim. Smooth out the hat and fold in the seam allowance for that hole that we just turned the hat through and we're going to take it to our iron to iron down the brim and iron down that open part of the hole. Once ironed I clip the hole closed and then top stitched all the way around the brim of the hat making sure to close over that hole first and then going the entire way around the brim. 
You could choose to leave it looking just like this. It is technically all finished, but I do like to add some extra rows of top stitching around the brim of the hat just to give it that little bit more stability. I line up the edge of my presser foot against the previous row of stitching and then do another circle around the brim of the hat and I keep repeating that until I have filled the whole brim in with rows of top stitching. I cut off all the threads from my top stitching and our adorable baby hat is complete. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as I taught you how I made these hats with the chin strap. And if you did enjoy the video, don't forget to press like down below and subscribe to see more of our videos. If you would like to see how I made these matching bloomer shorts here that Ruben is wearing, I shared a YouTube short for how to make baby shorts like this. It's a really easy tutorial, so I shared it as a YouTube short. It's just a one minute video. I'll link that down below if you'd like to watch that as well. If you do make a baby hat like this, I would love to see a picture of it. You can tag me on Instagram at mymummakes.marie and follow me over there to see what I'm up to during the week and any of the projects that I make that don't actually make it onto YouTube. Well, hello. So thanks again for spending part of your day with me here on my channel and until next time, go get creative and we'll see you later.